Hi, welcome to this modern lesson about the one-to-one -one iPad classroom. The aim of this tutorial is to give you an idea of where you might start once you find out that you have access to a one-to-one -one classroom. So what I wanted to introduce you to was a really simple way that you can test the waters if you like with what it's like when you have every student in your room with an iPad, how they can interact with each other and with you. So my suggestion is that we start with an application called Nearpod which you may well have come across. So Nearpod allows you to create presentations on your uh, on your laptop or computer. These can then be downloaded via the app onto your iPad and you can have an interactive uh, lesson with your students who will also have the app on their iPad. All of this will become more clear as we go along. What I want to show you first of all is how to create a presentation using Nearpod. I'm using a MacBook Air for this, obviously running Safari, and I am signed in to the Nearpod uh, website. So once you've created an account, my account is a free one, so it doesn't have all of the uh, sort of super high-end features that you can get, but for your average teacher, this has got some incredible possibilities. So I'm going to hit create and you can see I've set up a, a test here. All I've done so far is name it, um, name it Modern Lessons. So double click, click on that and you can see I've given it a name and I have, I have a first and second slide which are preset by Nearpod and I can change those later. Okay, so I want to keep this simple, but show you a good range of the functionality that's on offer. So if we open up uh, adding a slide, these are your uh, these are your options. I'm not going to go through each one of these because some of them are relatively straightforward. But if I just want to create a new slide, I click on this, and I can drag file types here. So the the most common things would be a PDF or a, or a zip file. So I've got something on the desktop ready, which I'm just going to drag in here. I'll upload the file, just take a little bit of time. And just while this up is uploading, uh, it's worth also knowing that if you had a PDF document, uh, maybe a converted PowerPoint or Keynote, you could literally drag that into this uh, area and it would create a slide by slide uh, presentation based on your PDF pages and that could be your presentation done. If you did that it would be great but you'd be missing out on some of the really positive functionality and interactivity of Nearpod which I will show you very very shortly. So that slide was added successfully and there it is. Okay, but I don't want it there and after my welcome. I'm going to add just a couple more slides just to show you a few features. I'm going to add a quiz. It's only going to have two questions. So let's call it uh, test quiz. A couple of easy questions. What's the capital of England? Answer Paris. Was the correct answer, so that is set, and you save. Okay, so it's a one one test, well, one question test. That's fine. So after the the quiz, I want to also show you the Q and A because this I think could be very very powerful in the classroom. Um, so you can set a really open ended question. Now we need to select that there's more than one correct answer and that this is a, a sort of manual answer question. So in our uh, answer here we again set this a manual answer and if you want to write lots you can 
and say that it's more than two lines of text. So we save that, and that will be crucial later on when we go to the presentation stage. So there are lots of other file types that you, you could put into your slide. Uh, you can add videos you've downloaded, perhaps from YouTube, or you've put together yourself. Um, you can just add in more uh, simple static slides, which work really well. Just drop another one in. Um, and basically you can just piece together lots of different bits of information and the idea is along the way you can actually gauge how your students are responding to the material. You can either test them then and there, you can get them to feed back to you. And the great thing about uh, Nearport, as you'll see when I show you this, the screenshots from the teacher and student iPads, is that there's nowhere to hide. Everyone in involves themselves, even the, the quiet students who don't often participate in a class can get involved. So that's uploaded nicely. Uh, the only other thing I'll show you is you can add a draw it, which I love. Um, and here you can give instructions, uh, draw a plant cell, oh, no such thing as a planning cell, uh, have an empty canvas and that is that, so you, again you'll see how this works later, so I'm happy with that, let's put the thank you at the end, there we go, press done, and then crucially when you get to this point, you need to publish because otherwise you won't be able to access it on your iPad. So my presentation is being published. It might take a few minutes, during which time I'm going to switch from my Mac to my iPad. So I've now switched to the iPad so you can see what Nearpod looks like in its app form. So I've logged in and you can see here's my modern lessons uh, presentation. So I tap on that and it will lead me to this screen uh, where I will get a preview of the presentation. So this is the important part. I press launch and you'll see that a pin has been generated at the top of the screen. And at this point you would read out that pin number to your students. Just so you know the, uh, the letters are not case sensitive, which saves a lot of time. So whilst that's going on, your students are uh, putting this pin in, and just to show you what that was like for them. You can see here's my iPhone acting as a student. So the presentation has to download on their screen, on their device, and meanwhile I uh, wait patiently uh, for them to get what they get where they need to be. So you can see now that their screen looks like the centre part of my screen. So they have the live presentation screen. I have the the preview screen, if you like. I'm tapping madly all over my iPhone and you see nothing happens whatsoever because they have no control uh, over what is on their screen at, at, at most points during this. So what happens is I'm going to swipe my screen uh, to take me to the next slide which is the registration process. So I am going to register as a student hit next and I get told thank you and you can see on my, on the teacher screen uh, modern lessons has registered and in the very top left you can see the green people icon says one person is in that class so you know I've got say so you've got 18 students in the class once that hits 18 you know that there are 18 people all in Nearpod in the process of uh, signing up to the course and you can see at any point if that number drops then people have dropped out of the, the Nearpod presentation and need to be uh, brought back onto task. So it's a really easy way of keeping track of who's doing what. So once I am happy that everyone's logged in I'm going to swipe on 
and launch my students into the presentation. So here we go. Now as the student, the only thing I can do on a slide is zoom in. That is the only functionality. Zooming in and out is all I can do. So other than that, I am completely at the behest of my teacher. So you as a teacher deliver your lesson and whilst the students have got this right in front of them, there's no straining to see the board, uh, no worrying about you know, what's going on, you will find that they are just so intensely focused on this screen. So you do your thing and then we will move to the quiz part and I get asked as the student, am I ready to take a quiz and on my screen I'm seeing the live data feed. Now this is obviously very simple because all I did was put in one question. Here you go, I've made my choice. Hit next. Uh, tap next to submit your final answers or you can go back to review. I'm happy with that. And you can see whilst I was doing that, on the teacher's screen it tells you green means correct, red would have meant incorrect. Uh, and 100% of the class got 100% of the questions right. As the teacher, if I tap on the two, I can see what each student wrote for every single question. That very, very useful functionality. So I've now pushed this onto the Q&A slide, which I mentioned earlier, I think is very, very powerful. So the student now has the answer to type any answer that they like. pretty much as long or as short as you have, have said. And they hit done, they can then submit that answer. And that answer will come up on your screen pretty quickly. Ignore the statistics, that isn't what this is about. This is about generating real, meaningful discussion in your classroom. And the way it works is this, obviously at this point, I'm getting a list of 20 something answers. I'm just having a flick through, seeing if any of them are particularly interesting, if I'm worried about the fact that they're missing a point or anything like that. If I come across something, I can uh, look at this answer and you can see that there's a share button uh, at the top right hand corner. And if I hit share, then that answer gets pushed to every screen in the classroom. And again, they can't do anything with that other than look at it and engage with it. And that, I feel, is incredibly useful because you see it's anonymous and I think that, again, is really, really good. This could be the response from any student in the room. It could be the student that never says anything but has made a really profound and interesting point. Or it could just be that there are lots of people putting similar sort of thoughtless or not carefully planned out answers and you just want to share an example of that and the whole class gets to engage with this one focused task this one response from a student if you want to name names you can but if you want to keep it anonymous you can do that as well and I just think that that's really useful um, so that is that uh, moving them on I've got the draw it function which again really clever, really great. As a student, I've been asked to draw a plant cell. Well, I'm afraid it's been a very long time since I drew a plant cell. But I remember it was a bit squiggly and it had squiggly bits in it and that's probably uh, the nucleus. Anyway, I can submit that uh, as I would uh, as I did the last answer and again I get my squiggly terrible drawing up on the screen but the same thing applies I can have a look and I can share that with the class should I wish to embarrass myself with my poor drawing skills but that's so powerful, it's so interesting um, that material that's usually done in an exercise book privately, never shared with anybody uh, can now be sent out to a whole group of people and discuss in a really meaningful way. So, I think having seen these things, you may begin to understand why I would recommend Nearpod as one of the first tools that you should try out when launching into a one-to-one -one iPad classroom. I just think that the level of engagement that you get from this tool is second to none. Students really will be utterly focused on what they're doing 
on their screen uh, and to be able to share and have really meaningful conversations about work that they have created is a uh, is a new opportunity for a, will be a new opportunity for a lot of teachers and certainly a lot of students that the work that normally gets done quietly in an exercise book can suddenly be exposed um, in, I think in a positive way and, uh, and they can really get some, some feedback from that um, both from you and their peers and I think that is where Nearpod can really make the difference so I hope that this gives you some idea of A. what the iPad is capable of and B. what you could do if you were given the opportunity of having a one-to-one -one iPad classroom thanks very much Thank you.